four and a half years ago before Canada opened up. And uh, when we got there, my wife wanted nothing to do with network marketing because we had done it, you know. And she goes, I'm not doing that thing again. But anyway, and I'll, I'll talk about my story. But when we went to St. Louis, just seeing the people being happy. And a, and a lot of companies, if you're part of that team, that team is that team. They don't associate with this team, you know. And everybody was happy. People were getting cars. And we go, there's something different that's here. And I, I, I relate this business to like a three-legged stool. And you've heard Jeff say that before. And, you know, I heard, uh, we went, to, we drove 14 hours last year to hear Jeff and Bo in Indianapolis from Montreal. So we drove in, it was uh, at a bunch of Shaolin and Colby Camisa were at. They were hosting it in Indianapolis, and it was a phenomenal event. And Jeff said something really important. He says, as we're in this business, we're receivers and transmitters. So, you know, we go to events to receive information. And as we receive that information, it's our duty to make sure that we share that with people so we transmit that information. So I hope to transmit one thought that could possibly change your mindset, to change your business, okay? Uh, I'm here just to share whatever. And, and guys, this is not scripted, okay? People say, well, what are you going to say? I go, I don't know what I'm going to say. I do know what I'm going to say, but I don't really know how it's going to come out. Because when you speak from the heart, you can't go wrong. And that's really what I'm here to do today. And uh, getting to know Mike and Ray Lynn, I mean, I haven't played big ball bowling in a long time. So, <laughs> I mean, I was walking up and the ball fell out of my hand once. And uh, they didn't say, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, we know? did. <laughs> <laughs> but they were laughing with me, not at me, you know. So that's all they were. <laughs> okay, John. You weren't even playing. So you should have no, talked, did. you know. <laughs> You know what, we've had a, we had a great event Thursday night at the Jen and Tony's, and then last night we went out, and uh, hopefully tonight we're all going to get together and just go have fun and enjoy each other. Okay, that's really, you know, the most important thing. So I'm just going to share my story quickly, and I always like to start off with a video, because this business is all about you. It's all between our ears and how we keep the information. So, you know, I, I grew up in my uncle's music store. And some of you heard my story, and some of you haven't. I grew up in my uncle's music store. He played in a band, and as I grew up, I guess what I wanted to do, I wanted to own a music store, and I wanted to be in a band. And, you know, when you're 8, 9, 10 years old, you've got no limitations. You know, I used to go play Saturdays, and I used to be as roadie in the afternoon. I could never go at nighttime because it was past my bedtime, but I'd be mad. But anyway, so I grew up with that, and then I'd work in the store. And then as I, as I, as I got older, you know, I ended up franchising one of his stores, and I ended up playing in a band for 19 years. And, uh, you know, the, the band, they're like my family, you know, we did it for 19 years, so, and five guys, and, and we changed, we course corrected, you know, some of the guys left and some new ones came in, but it was fun. But the reason I share that story is that, you know, dreams do come true, and we're going to talk today about dreams and goals, because what you focus on grows. Okay, if you focus on nothing, guess what's going to happen? Nothing. Okay, but I didn't understand that at eight, ten years old. So... Anyway, I ended up franchising one of the stores, and uh, as we had our store, it was, it was my dad and I that owned it together. You know, we went to the bank, we got a loan, like you do, typically do for a, for a business, and my brother came and joined us and worked with us. And uh, I'm of Italian background, we have a lot of relatives come from, uh, from Europe, from Italy, from all over the place, so they come here, and the first thing they say is, when do you guys live? Because here we live to work, but in Europe they live to live. Has anybody been to Europe? Does anybody know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, we, they, live to, they live to live over there. They enjoy the moment. And that always stuck in the back of my head. And I loved what I did, you know. And I just said to myself, I could exist. You know when something's lingering in your mind? I loved what I did. I absolutely loved it. But I knew there was probably something else out there. But I didn't know who, what, where, what, how. So anyway, my brother said, still, I want you to come and get some information. I had no idea what he was talking about. So we actually, uh, I, I went with him, and uh, out of respect for my brother, I went. And maybe some people here have been invited by a friend, having no clue what they were talking about, but they went out of respect. That's pretty cool. <laughs> She's flashing me, guys. There's a lot of people flashing me here today, so if I get derailed, keep me back on track. <laughs> she gives me a real eerie feeling. <laughs> I, I like puns, guys. So now she's double like me. Shades here. Anyway, uh, so I, I went to get some information, and the guy started talking. He says, "Imagine a business not having to have any employees, no rent, no government, no uh, and uh, no uh, no employees, no rent, and no inventory." And I was a bricks and mortar guy. You know, you don't know what you don't know until you do know. So 
I said, how do you have a business? I always kind of like a light bulb. You know, a, a dimmer switch? You know it's off? And you know how you turn it, you hear the click? Well, that was me when I got there. No lights on. But then this guy started talking. And as he spoke, the dimmer switch got a little bit brighter. So I just said to myself, how do you do all this stuff? And then he says, imagine a business, no government paperwork, not having to go to the bank to put all of your assets on the table as collateral. And then he said, the most important thing to me, this is wrapping your arms around the global marketplace. Like, oh my God, that's, that, that's too good to be true. How does that even exist? So that was my journey and my, and my introduction to this industry. Because I just looked at what I did. I was a prisoner of geography. You know, I knew people, when, and I'm originally from Ottawa, Canada. I moved to Montreal because of beauty, because of love, you know, things that we do. But, uh, you know, this was in Ottawa, and uh, I knew people wouldn't come from the east end of Ottawa to the west end and take music lessons or buy a musical instrument. But more importantly, I knew they wouldn't come from eastern Canada, from western Canada, the United States, from Asia, from Europe. But in this business, we have the ability to wrap our arms around the global marketplace. We've got an e-commerce model, just like eBay, just like Amazon, and people can come and shop from us. I mean, I didn't understand that then. So that just spoke volumes, and that really was my introduction to this industry. And I, of course, corrected over the years. You know, Judy and I have been with companies that have, we've made money, and then the companies have fallen down. You know, one company, one owner, you know, there was three owners, and two of them were, were a couple, and they got caught with their, their hand in the cookie jar. But, you know, we still continue to receive residual income for two or three years, but Judy just said, I don't want to do anything with that anymore. And so we said, why can't we be normal? You know, we had moved to the States. We lived in Sarasota, Florida for five years. We lived there, but there was no family. So we decided to move back home. And when we went back home, we said, let's be normal. So we said, let's just buy a regular business. But we looked at a telecom, and we bought a telecom business. But why did we buy the telecom business? Because of residual income. And I want you guys to ask yourself this question. With what you're currently doing outside of the area, do you trade time for money? Or are you earning residual income? And some people just don't understand residual income. And I'm just going to give you an example. How many people have got a cell phone bill? Whether you use it or not, you still have to pay it? How many people have got insurance bills? You know, they pay insurance every month. Whether they need it or not. How many people uh, have got electricity bills? Okay. And whether you use it or not, you still have to pay it? So why don't we understand what the wealthy understand? Do something one time and continue to get paid for it. So we're teaching people how to create residual income, and that was a bit of a, 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 an eye-opening thought for me because I didn't understand it. But it's a principle that we need to understand because you can do this part-time from your home without having to give up the luxury of your work, your job. Anybody listen to the Jim Rohn tape? That is the best, one of the best training tapes out there. For those who don't have it, get your hands on it. What does he say? Spend, part, spend your full time on your job and part time on your... Orchard, exactly. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're teaching people, you know, we, you know, has anybody ever owned a business before? Okay, did anybody ever do any business plans? How much did you spend for your business plan? How much did I spend yeah. to have someone else buy it? Yeah. Well, I wrote it myself. Okay.
residual income, and the business plan is written. But here's the problem with the business plan. How many people in this room have ever said to themselves, oh, they want me to do that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it my way. Has anybody said I'm going to do it my way? <laughs> okay, I hear a couple of laughters out there. Okay, but if we're just nor that's normal, okay, because we think we know best. Because we don't take this industry seriously enough. We don't take it seriously enough. Well, that's one of the things you do from home, and anybody can do that. This is a profession, okay? Get educated on it. To me, it's the greatest industry in the world. It's the greatest equalizer in the world because it doesn't matter your race, doesn't matter your color, doesn't matter your background. What matters is what do you have here? What do you want for your life that you don't have right now? How many people can afford to buy a McDonald's, a Subway? You know, not a lot of people can afford to do that, but people still go out there. And how many businesses fail in the first three to five years? Well, guess what happens when your business fails? Okay, the bank's going to come and repossess whatever assets you put on the table. In Canada, we call it a small business loan. I don't know what it's called here. So, you know, we've got an amazing industry here. So, you know, Judy and I, of course, corrected over the year. I got off on a tangent there, but I think it was a good one. You know, but here's what I want you to realize that sometimes you have to course correct. And we've been with this company for four and a half years, and the first thing that we saw before we even registered is going to a conference in St. Louis, and just the culture of the people. I talked about three things earlier, you know. To have a good company, you need to have three stool, three legs. If you have two, it's very wobbly, okay? But you need to have a good company with strong management. You need to have good products, and you need to have the culture. And the culture of what we have really spoke to Judy and I when we went to that conference, I mean, we've got teams in here that have nothing to do with each other, but you treat each other. I mean, Bobby asked me to do a call, and I did a call for her. And I poured into her just like I poured into anybody. It wasn't a canned thing where I'm not going to say anything. You know, but we do that freely. And you don't see that in a lot of companies. So as you're sitting here, I don't care where you've been. What I want you to say is, where do you want to go? And we've all overcome obstacles in our life. Would we all agree? Okay, and I'm going to play a video right now that's going to talk, well, you're going to see something, and in that, well, as you watch this video, you're going to probably see something in it that you can relate to for yourself, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Maestro. Maestro. 